Good evening, my lovelies, and welcome back to Trollspeile. We're going to have a, our uh, regular little mirror, mirror on the wall session, as usual. Um, today's topic is again rhythm, because we think that it's uh, overlooked way too much. And uh, as some of you might have uh, caught already, uh, we have called this rhythm. It's not your fault. Uh, because we believe that um, neither the horse nor the rider is at fault for faulty rhythm. It might be that uh, there is weakness somewhere. It might be that the connection between rider and horse isn't uh, ordered to perfection. All that sort of thing. But um, it's more about being clever in how you uh, correct your weaknesses or exploit your strengths than it is about one being in the wrong completely. Or being blamed. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, blaming the horse or blaming the rider. There's no use in that. No, you don't get better just by blaming each other or blaming yourself or something. No. So um, we're going to try and, uh, and uh, discuss first uh, a bit about uh, how we think rhythm is important, how we can create rhythm even if there's weaknesses in both horse and rider. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're going to try and lay out a path for you that you can follow so that you can get good rhythm in your horses and in yourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'll not promise to make a good dancer. Um, <laughs> I can step yeah. on your toes though, uh, but uh, we're also going to put up some pictures as we go along and uh, we're also going to watch a little bit of a movie. Yeah, and and I am the one who's going to be like showing all the faults. Yeah. So like no. me and my horse. Yeah. And uh, I'm not afraid of that because uh, I've, I've been using myself as an example for many years um, and I've found that uh, it's... Um, it's rewarding, actually, because there are so many people out there that are blaming themselves all the time because they have problems. And we, as we know, we can see faults in all writers, even the ones, the most famous ones, because everyone has got We are trouble. particularly interested in finding faults in the most famous writers, obviously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then... No. No, not <laughs> no. really. We're but, trying but to help. A little bit, maybe. Yeah. But when you're talking about blame, you know, many people say that you shouldn't blame the horse, you should blame the, the rider is always at fault. But that's not true. No. Um, uh, of course, uh, the rider is the one who ne needs to take responsibility and do something about the stuff that yep. is happening. Uh, but in like... This blame game is not very um, useful. No. No. Uh, responsibility is a much better word to use because then you will do something instead of just blaming. Yeah. A simple, a simple uh, thing that most people um, might have had uh, a feeling of is, uh, you know, we talk about straightness in the horse. Mm. Um, and most horses, or all horses maybe even, aren't straight. Uh, they will be pushing off more with one hind uh, and the other hind won't be pushing off that well. And that means that, especially on one circle, you will always be tilted to one side. Mm. The rider is tilted to one side mm. by the horse. Mm. Is that the rider's fault? Can't be. No, it isn't. The, Can't that... be the horse's fault either because he just is like that. Yeah. So there's no, no one is at fault. But if we have... If we set ourselves a goal somewhere up there to have a horse that's really good at difficult dressage stuff or at fighting or whatever you want your horse mm -hmm. to be good at, right? Mm -hmm. um, then uh, it is important that we start correcting, for instance, that crookedness. Mm -hmm. So if the horse is stiff and strong in one leg and weak and soft in the other, we have to make the weak leg stronger. And yeah. we have to make the stiff leg softer. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and that is not blaming the horse, that no, is, is helping the horse. You take the responsibility because you have taken on yourself to make the horse better for what you want the horse for. Yeah. Uh, it's like you, the same could be said if, uh, if you take a person who wants to be a marathoner and 
uh, you train this person to be as strong and big as possible. You've, you're training the horse towards, or the person in this case, towards a goal that isn't what you want to reach. Mm -hmm. And that is how we have to think about the horse as well. If you want to make the horse straight, or if you want to have good rhythm in your horse, there has to be a reason in the other end somewhere. Yeah. And that reason is what gives you the responsibility to change it. You don't have to take the res responsibility on, mm -hmm. but if you want to get to whatever end you your want goal. to get to, mm -hmm. to your own goal, then you have to take that responsibility on yourself. Yeah. And that is not blame. That is a very fine goal to have. Yeah. It is a worthy thing to stretch yourself towards. Mm. It isn't something that you do wrong. No. And uh, and also we're using this this example uh, uh, where both the horse and the rider has some trouble um, to to show that most horses and riders have. Um, they they're struggling at all levels actually, because I, me, and my horse, we can do the piaf, we can do the passage, and we can do a lot of stuff that is advanced, but we can't get the right rhythm in trot and 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 also sometimes in, in canter when we're riding with more energy forwards, because of uh, things that are old um, old troubles. Uh, in the horse because the horse used to be a show jumper and was being perhaps jumped a little too much or I don't know I don't know the history of those it's important that we I think that we have to take a step away from even what, from what you were saying now that that the horse is like what he's like because of something that has happened we don't know we have no idea about that it doesn't really matter either um, and we it, shouldn't blame that is a, a very common thing blame the f former owner yes that is very common yeah and we, we should never do that no. we never know you never know what has happened no but we do know that if uh, a horse has been show jumping it is quite likely that the horse has been um, using his shoulders quite mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. to stabilize him or herself when he's landing yeah and it's quite a high strain on the horse in that area mm -hmm. that is that's a given yeah, doesn't mean that jump show jumping is bad. No, at all. Many show jumpers uh, have or uh, oh, that has been trained a lot uh, with a lot of jumping. They have this stiff yes. uh, shoulders. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when when I was young, I used to squat heavy. When I was too young, probably <laughs> to squat that heavy, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I had long sessions with lots and lots of heavy squatting, which has ruined my shoulder. Together with my bench pressing, which wasn't that good, and it took me years to correct that, even after I knew how to correct it. Mm -hmm. It took me years to correct it. Mm -hmm. Now I believe the right shoulder is more or less as strong as the left shoulder, but I had to work really hard to correct something that I put in there, even if I have a fairly good clue about what I'm doing and already had that when I was young. Mm -hmm. So the, we have to think the same way with the horse and it's very easy to fall into this habit of saying that the horse used to this or the horse used to that. Uh, and, and we are also at fault for doing that from time to time. The idea is not to blame anyone for what their horse is doing or what someone's horse has done or anything like that it, it, that's not the point and we're not aiming to find the fault in a previous rider or a previously used horse or what doesn't matter we're just looking at what is the strong points and the weak points of and this what particular can we do horse now? right now yeah right what now what can i do now right mm. yeah so um, and also, I, I need to tell perhaps a little about myself because um, I've had a neck injury when I was very young. And that like has. Like two years old or something like no, that. No, a baby. Less, uh, baby, yeah. even. Yep. Before I, I was able to walk. Mm -hmm. So it's something that has been with me for uh, 60 years. 
and it makes uh, my my movement stiff and lots of pain migraines back pains and stuff like that and uh, i often share uh, the things that i do to to improve my movement and and, and lessen the pain uh, on facebook and i experience that there are so many people who uh, have kind of the same um problems some of the same problems often yeah because you know um all these everyone has er, there are not two people that have the same exactly the same problem but you can relate you can relate to um somebody who has is having pain and having trouble sitting correctly on the horse you mm. know quite simply yeah mm. and then and then what we want to show today is that you're not alone and uh, uh, we don't blame people for not being perfect and we believe so, they shouldn't be no strongly <laughs> yes but we can work uh, to get better and, and to make the life a little better for the horse and for yourself and we're going we're gonna to show some simple, very simple things that uh, we do to to start uh, helping a horse and also a little uh, for the rider um, to to get a better ryth rhythm. And uh, of course, we uh, we're going to continue this series with uh, with our, our streams, and um, then we're going to get more into uh, what we can do with uh, with all kinds of stiff movement and uh, riders that are in pain and stuff like oh, that. Oh, we're going to go Ooh. over mobility training, yeah, strength training, <laughs> all sorts of stuff <laughs> Yeah, to help you guys so along. Just, yeah, but well, perhaps we should uh, try to look at one of the pictures. Yeah. We have this um, uh, number three, I think. We could start with that. Oh, This is yeah. how Dalton really wants to move. He wants to move with his back down and his head in the air like that. Yeah. And also, if you, uh, you remember, you remember our uh, stream when we we're talking about parallelity, where the lower arm and the uh, the hind cannon, um, the forearm in the uh, that, that's the the from the front knee and and up, and uh, and the cannon behind. They're, they're supposed to be parallel and they're, they're not, not they're not parallel here no. because Dalton he wants to move with his bum in the air yep and he, collapsing in his uh, uh, lumber back that is the back behind the saddle you get that you get an impression that it's like three different horses in the same picture yeah yeah and yeah he, he, he wants he, to move he like feels that. like that as well it's quite interesting yeah. too that even if you're doing uh, giving doing quite an effort to to um, to it, allow him to move yeah uh it's it, he has still shaped your your back and pelvis so that it you kind of look yeah. like him yeah that's it's, very it's, interesting I it's find. very difficult to sit correctly on him yeah because he, and i and because i have this wobbly uh, body uh it he, when he is moving like that, he's bouncing in, in a way that is not very nice uh, to sit on, mm. and then my back becomes like his. Yep. It's it, and uh, so that is the reason why we're going to sh see now how what I'm doing when I'm posting to the trot and when I'm standing in my stirrups in in the canter. Yep. Because then he is not able to influence my my body that much that is true mm. so but anyway what, what we're looking at at the moment is you can see that the horse is uh, half a yard in front of the vertical yeah. the neck is not rounded at all you can see the under neck is bulging out a bit mm -hmm. his back is dropped which means that his hindquarters are out behind him somewhere mm -hmm. uh, and his, tail's ob his tail is like bumped up <laughs> yeah and you can see that he's obviously on the forehand yeah so there's lots and lots of faults, if you want to call it that, in this image. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also see that doesn't look to me like the, the rain contact is very strong. Yeah. Uh, it looks also to me as if your butt is sort of hardly touching the, 
the saddle. I'm actually posting the other job there. So I thought so. Yeah. Uh, you're also sort of leaning forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. So lots of stuff is done to make it easier for the horse to lift his back and yeah. to drop his head down. Mm. Um, you, there are tons of ways to alleviate some of these problems. A lot of the, I know a lot, it, it is very easy to just put on a big bit and bend the neck mm -hmm. and it looks a little bit better, but the butt would still be in the air. Yeah. So, and, and, and you also know, you will, if you put sorry. on a, a, a curb bit, yep. um, then he will curl his neck, oh, yeah. but then he will also like get this really, really tight um, uh, muscle knots in his neck yep. that is sort of pulling against. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so it makes it very difficult for him to move. Um, I just, I want, I want to sort of find to express more of the connection between what you're doing and what he's doing, but I'm not, uh, maybe we have sort we of exhausted say, uh, that watch idea. Watch some of the other pictures perhaps? Yes, maybe we should. Or we can, we can bump. Uh, uh, maybe we could go to the numbers. number four would be nice. So here right. I'm starting, you see that I'm still posting to the trot yeah. because I need to relieve his back so it can actually swing. Mm -hmm. uh, because he, when, when I get him to stretch forwards and downwards, he is actually lifting his back. Yep. And you can see that he does that now. Now his back looks much better and your back looks flatter too. Yeah, because I'm in the air. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. You are my instructors. You, I don't you. think you're right in that because <laughs> uh, it is very rare to see riders who look better through the back when they're sort of airborne, when their butt is in True. the air when posting to the trot. Yeah. It is very easy then to, to tilt your pelvis the wrong way so that you stick your butt out a bit yeah. when you stand up, right? True. So I'm not, I'm not gonna, you're, you're not getting that one. This <laughs> is. You are riding well here. That's what I can see. <laughs> okay, okay. You can also see that that uh, your butt is engaged. Yep. Uh, and there is a uh, obvious crease just in a, in your riding pants just beneath your butt, mm -hmm. which means that you're actually moving up forward through the butt. You can uh, uh, through the, the hip hip, hip yeah. joints, mm -hmm. and you can see that also because you're moving your hips f a fair bit forward. Yep. All right. So. Because my, my seat should be, when I'm rising in the posting trot, mm -hmm. it should be over the, the, the cantle. cantle. Yeah, the front pommel. No, front, the pommel. Uh, the, the, pommel, pommel. the front pommel, yeah. Mm. So, but we need, to, we need to discuss this a bit more. We can see that you're still leaning a bit, little bit forward. Mm -hmm. And the horse is still obviously on the forehand. It's big time on the forehand. Yeah. And you can see that the hind leg is not at all there where it should be. But <clears throat> the hind leg is not sticking as far out as in the other picture. No. The because one that's standing on the ground. You can see that he's actually lifting his back in the, the right behind the saddle. Just a, a way more than he was in the other yeah. picture. And that means that there's now, you can see it in the picture, you can feel the sort of flow through the picture that in this one, he's connected throughout. Yeah. So what happens here to improve his movement is that now when he's connected throughout his body, mm -hmm. That means there can be rhythm. Yeah. Without this connection, there cannot mm -hmm. be rhythm. And or if there's rhythm, it, it's by luck or bad luck or something like that. Yeah. So so whenever he lands on one diagonal in this, when he moves like he is moving in this picture, mm -hmm. the load is uh, spread out over longer time. Yeah. Every time his legs touch down. Mm -hmm. His whole body sort of bounces slowly around that because mm. of the connection in the top line. And that means that mostly so this feels like a the, slower rhythm. Yeah. Even if it's on his, uh, his forehand here, he, he, he will not sort of uh, uh, strain his front legs as much as when he is disconnected uh, as he was in the, in the former picture. Exactly. Mm. Very interesting, I find. Yeah, cool. So, shall we have a look at picture number two? Nearly yeah. headless Hannah. Completely yeah. headless, actually. But uh, I found that one that was... Uh, because there was uh, Dalton, who is the most interesting thing here. Now he's parallel. Mm -hmm. And then you can see that he's much less on the forehand. Yep. <coughs> Just because I'm stretching him, 
and and making him lift his back. Mm -hmm. And he's coming up to the outside <coughs> right? Yeah, and also his nose is, um, it's at least it's. Uh, it's in front of, I would say, the vertical. It's not. It's not back behind the vertical, no. uh, at least. No. So he's much more balanced here. Yeah, but yeah. still, his back is sagging just a little. Yeah, but that yeah, I've never been able to to get his back really uh, the way it should. But that's yeah. an interesting that because it, I think it's connected to the way he's not bending his knees. Yeah. So when when the hind leg hits the ground, you can see that the the off hind, the left hind here, stretches forward, and it's going to hit the ground now, and the knee is going to be dead straight. Yeah, and also it's it's also his shoulders are stiff, so that he's his he finds it very difficult to to stretch his front legs like forwards mm -hmm. freely. Yep. Uh, so in, when he needs time to do, and we can see that later on in the movie. I can attest to that. Video. It needs time to get your yeah, shoulder yeah. loose. So, so, and, and if the shoulders are not able to move freely, mm -hmm. you can't actually w work correctly with your hind legs because they need to work in rhythm. As yep. we, are, yeah. we can also see that it, you're still leaning forward yeah. in order to deload or take load off of his mm. back, right? Mm. Uh, this is still posting trot, if I'm not much mistaken. Yep. Uh, and you can also see that your leg is, I would say, too far forward. Yep. If, we, then, if, we, if I'm going to be like nit, nitpicking. Yeah. Uh, and that is probably like half the reason you're leaning forward. But also, if you're able to bring your body so that your body is perpendicular to the ground, the upper body, and you're straight through the spine and all that, let, let's say we do that. Yeah, in the posting trot, yeah. Yeah, let's mm. say we do it. It doesn't really matter if it's mm. sitting or posting. Uh, and then we bring your legs a little bit back to accommodate for that. Yeah. If you do that, you're loading the back much more. Mm. Uh, and then you're, you're actually asking the horse to sit down sit his butt down a little mm. bit but we can see that with a back like this it's not going to happen no he's just then he will just uh, drop his back drop more his ba back even more and become and lift very his head tense back up and be the yeah. same as he was in the first yeah. picture we saw mm. so and uh, i guess he's got pain here and there and we're not quite sure where could be that, it, that it's pain places. sometimes it is sometimes it's not it it's might be tight. that it's just lack of capacity yeah and short top line yeah yeah so uh, could we go back to the first picture the number three one yeah nah he looks worse now <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so. absolutely yeah. and even even if we if we look at the how you're sitting mm -hmm. i'd say you're closer to the correct seat here but the horse looks worse yeah because the yeah that's a good point Mm -hmm. Because if I sit like that, he will he will drop his back and uh, he raise will drop his, his back, head. or uh, and you I drop your collapse. back because he moves like that. It's yeah, really yeah, difficult but it, to tell. Yeah, but it's impossible for me to sit correct when he does like yeah. he does that. Can we go back to the to the number four again? Uh, uh, yeah, and then number two. And then we got uh, uh, number one, that is the canter. Because then you, we can see that in the canter, he. the good thing about canter is that it, it naturally, um, uh, like, the, the horse would like to lift his back when he's cantering. Yeah, it, it, the, the canter, because you're swinging both hind legs forwards, not quite at once, but almost some, at yeah. the same time. Mm -hmm. It allows for there to be not the, like when the horse is in the air with both hind legs. Mm -hmm. It is easier for the horse to swing his whole hindquarters underneath yeah. and also bring the small of the back up. The yes. lumbar spine mm -hmm. rolls up a little bit. You can see it in this picture. You can also see that there's a little bit of bend in the in the grounded outside hind. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And I'm knowing this horse right, I'm sure he'll be able to straighten out his right hind before it touches down. <laughs> but you can at least see that there's some engagement. And that's what's lifting his, his back behind there. Mm -hmm. But it, to me now, it looks like because of that stretch back there, he looks a little bit tighter in the top line in front. Yeah. Because he's, because he's stretching his top line backwards because he's swinging his hand hindquarters under mm. so that means that he might be it might not be that he's stiff in the lumbar spine or the musculature around the lumbar spine it might be that he's stiff somewhere further forward yeah I'm, I, you can feel that it's, we know that he yeah, is of course but yeah. but you can, it, i think it is possible to see it here uh, if i could have the number four picture again please you can see here his neck looks longer mm -hmm. and his hindquarters are unengaged. Yeah. So when he's tighter behind, he's longer, or when he's looser behind, his hindquarters yep. go behind him somewhere. Mm -hmm. on a... Then he's able to stretch his neck. Then you can see that he stretches his neck. Can we go back to the number one again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is his biggest problem. He's not able to do both. Can't do both. Mm -hmm. Because he's too short. So you have to do... In, the, in his top line. So he has to do... You have to work on one or the other. Or, yeah. Which you do here. You allow him to stretch in both pictures. And you can see here that you're even more leaned forward here. But he's still bringing his hindquarters more under. Yeah. This is important. And it's so important uh, in this in this case when we're talking about because I'm not able to just sit down and correct his uh, his uh, movement King with Kong my body. Be able to. No, no, that's true. <laughs> but you know, if if you're if there was a, a horse that was um, not so problematic, so that mm. then you could and the ho and and uh, rider with a, a, a sore back. You could do this without, uh, 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 like, compromising your back. Yeah. Because then you could train yourself to to sit, uh, to be more strong, to be more balanced by, mm -hmm. by standing in the stirrups, by posting to the trot, and do it do it in the correct way. Yeah. Then you will become more balanced, and the horse will carry you in a better way. Yeah. And then it it will be easier to sit on the horse. Mm -hmm. So uh, there will be much less compression forces on the spine when you when you ride yeah. when you stand up or ride uh, post to the trot, for instance. Yeah. Or even posting to the canter or yeah, standing true. in canter, as yeah. you do here. There will be much less compression forces on the spine. That is that when when the horse lands, your your vertebrae are pushed together, and because your your back isn't perfectly straight like an iron rod there will be some sort of sharing mm -hmm. force as well and mm. uh, also uh, there will be twisting forces if your hips aren't uh, uh, made of jelly mm -hmm. or something yeah. there will be twisting forces and all that mm. makes for a lot of um, stress yeah. for your back mm. and for a lot of riders for lots and lots of riders, it is important to alleviate that yeah. stress in the back. So, riding is good for your back if the horse moves well yeah. and you're moving well yourself. But not if not. We lost the picture. Do you want to press? Yeah, please. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I needed to think. <laughs> <laughs> And also, <laughs> it, 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 the, po the important thing is, uh, yeah, first that if you do this, uh, that we're going to show you in the video, then then the horse will be able to, uh, in time, uh, with, with time, to move more in a way that is more easy to sit on. And you will also get more balance yourself. Yeah. We... So this, uh, this when you're standing in the stirrups like this. Yep. Um, it's important to get the right angles in your body mm. so that you can see that I'm not too low in my heels because many people collapse in their ankles. Mm -hmm. And then if, the, if you could do that, you're blocking the ankle, then you're blocking the knee and you're blocking the hip. Mm. So the, you need to be able to like 
flex in the ankle and then you don't you sh of course you shouldn't have a high heel but you shouldn't have a too high too low heel either now, i i I'm, would venture to say that it doesn't really matter if your heel is uh, above or below the vertical depending on why it's there if yeah. you pull your heel up yeah then that's wrong mm -hmm. if you collapse your ankle down well, then that's wrong because a collapse doesn't carry anything, does it? Mm -hmm. So the idea is that you are you should be able to carry some weight on your stirrups mm -hmm. without pushing the stirrup forwards. Yeah, true. So if if you're able to sort of grab on to the stirrup with your toes or some such, mm -hmm. it's like I I I like to say it like if you're if you're gonna run up a set of stairs, how do you do that? Do you put your just your toes on the stair? Does that work for you? No. That hurts really bad. <laughs> Teeth and nose and all those things. So you have to put at least the ball of your foot yeah. onto the stair. Yep. The step in the stair in order to push yourself up. Mm -hmm. You have to do the same in the stirrup. Put mm -hmm. the ball of your foot on the stirrup. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to think like, uh, like a monkey on a branch. I sort of grab mm -hmm. softly around the stirrup with my, with my toes. Mm -hmm. And that helps me to be soft throughout without collapsing. Mm. So it's finding that balance. Yeah. It's hard, but hey. And but you're doing it, so yeah. it can be done. And many people, when they try to do this, uh, they have a trouble balancing. Uh, and what I, a, a great tip when you're trying to practice this is um, don't think that you're going to stand in the stirrup. Think that you're leaning forward, forwards with your upper body until your bum leaves the saddle, and then you're going to be fine. It's a, a very. Can you say e that again, yeah. slowly. For, for Sit me. in the saddle, uh, well, the horse is standing or when it's moving. Sit still right up in the saddle, and then you just lean forward with your upper body until your bum leaves the saddle, and then you're standing, and then you're balanced. It's really easy. Just do that, and then your legs will be in, this, in the right place and everything. Even if it's easy, it's going to feel horrible. Just yeah, so you and then know. you do it again. Yeah. yeah, practice means do it again oh. until you can do it. What? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to watch this a little. Uh, a little bit of a movie? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can we have the video, please? Very interesting to watch myself. Or... There you go. Yeah, and there, uh, what I'm trying to do, because he needs to stretch his top line, then he needs to walk with or move with a fairly long rein. And then he's trying to, you know, and, and I'm exaggerating my, the, my hip movements and, like, and my weight in my stirrups, because he needs to lift his back and also like move the saddle like this tipping movement that we've been talking about in earlier videos. You can actually see it here. Yeah. And now he, you could see also when he was starting to trot, he's like tensing up and then he wants to tense up like this. And what I'm doing is that I'm positioning him to the inside on the circle and I'm saying, yeah, you need to bend. And then I'm releasing and I'm letting him stretch. That's not what you said positioning. That's yeah, well, there's a bit of a bend sometimes, but not much, eh? Yeah, because he's on the circle and he should be bent, but mm -hmm. I'm positioning him a little more than than the bending of the circle when he is tensing up, and when he's yeah. tensing up his uh, underneck. Yep. And you can see here that his, his front legs, they look like they're coming out of the same hole. Yeah, when seen from the side, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of movement, not much. So that is yeah, because his shoulders don't move. Mm -hmm. um, but what we need to do then is just continue moving. Uh, important point here. Mm. When, when, um, could you stop the movie for just a sec? Uh, you say that you allow him to stretch his top line. Yeah. But the aim is to get his shoulders to move more. Mm. Interesting then that uh, one of our heroes, Kelly Starrett mm -hmm. from Mobility Ward, mm. uh, he's, he used to say that. You can't fix only the shoulders. Mm -hmm. You must take care of the thoracic spine at the same time. Yes. And that is also what he's calling the stab mode principle. 
where the back uh, the back can yes. be stable when the the hip joints or the shoulders aren't moving yeah if they are uh, stiff then the back will join them in the movement yes and then and they are sort of uh, uh the, it's the same uh, is the other way around as well mm -hmm. if the if the or, or the, uh, the spine is unstable is unstable then the hips and shoulders must be stiff yeah and the, the opposite way yeah so the, you can't just fix one no you must fix both at the same time and but what i'm what i'm doing here is that i'm i'm bending him then the outside shoulder must take a longer way you know yep. on the bend yep. on the circle yeah the outside shoulder must be moving more than the inside mm -hmm. and also then i'm losing um, i'm positioning him to the inside then the under neck the tense muscles in his neck will relax and as we have talked about the under neck the, uh, the muscles on the underside of the neck are in direct opposition to the top line yeah so they so are if, antagonists if this is tense in the horse mm -hmm. then this can't sort of can't stretch yeah they and they can't carry yeah so they yeah, yeah. because then because when they're tense they're not carrying no tension here being in, in in negative terms but if these are tense these can't work they can be tense too yeah they of course but they, they can't can, move yeah. freely no they can't carry no mm. it's impossible all right should we so, run it again yep and you can see he wants to tense up. He wants to. But then, and then I just say, no, just bend here and then I release. You must not sit here and just tug on the inside rein. Just, that is no. not helpful. You it is just... important to understand that, in my opinion, at least, if you want to, to keep doing this, when you bend the horse to the inside, you do not release or yield the, the rein in order for the horse to be uh, rewarded mm -hmm. you do it so that the horse can do the thing you want him to do that is the active thing you do yep mm -hmm. releasing the hand makes the horse stretch and that's what you're yeah, going, said, that's you what see you're, there yeah. that he yeah. was uh, yeah. stretching uh, and is trying to keep my contact yeah so because horses they move into the pressure yeah. if you if you if you if you push the horse, he yeah. will push back. Yeah. So if you make contact with the rein and then you slowly uh, move your hands forwards, the horse will try to stretch to keep the contact. And you can see the shoulders now; they're starting to move more. Freer now. Because yeah, and we haven't. And he has much, and he's much more uh, willing to stretch down now. Yeah. And you can see it because the the still movies, the still pictures that we uh, were watching, mm -hmm. were from this video. So you could see that he he is becoming more and more uh, parallel, and that is the rhythm. The rhythm. Yeah, but well, you can see that it falls out of the rhythm from time to time, and then yeah. it becomes upside down for quite a while. Yeah, because he uh, thinks it's very difficult. Yeah, this is so difficult for him. Yeah, but of course I can shorten him up. I, he can do the piaf. Yeah, yeah. Because he then he's not he he's not forced to to take move with this energy from the hind hind legs no. through the back and forwards. Yeah. Then he, he will So in the piaf the uh, you can you can do a piaf with a much more rigid back than you can do when yeah. swinging forward. Mm -hmm. it, it, the same thing happens for us when if we try to squat really heavy. Yeah. Then the back needs to be really tightly braced with mm. all the muscles around your core, yeah. which which makes it really difficult to breathe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can't do be that tight all yeah. the time if you're gonna keep so moving to like swing. he does. He yeah. needs to swing, mm. and then he needs to find the right rhythm for contraction in all the muscles. Yeah, and also you know this back swing thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the back swing. Uh, means that the horse needs to stabilize his spine. Yes, that's a very weird uh, yeah. thing. Yeah, because that's... the spine needs to go like this, yeah. not like this. Yeah. Because this is not a, a, a strong spine. This is a strong spine. Yeah. And then it feels like the 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 spine is sort of swinging. Yeah. But uh, 
And to, just to add to the confusion, if you might, could you stop for a second again? <laughs> Look at his on the four, <laughs> four legs. He's yeah. on the forehand. Yeah. There's no, no uh, escaping that. Bit. <laughs> nice one. Thank you, man. Uh, <laughs> It's our funny, funny editor here, <laughs> editor in chief, uh, but it's really good anyway. But my point is that uh, when when the back is doing, or the spine is doing what you're saying, it's sort of the the hips allow the back yeah. part to move, and the mm -hmm. shoulders allow the front part to move a little bit. Yeah. So it's a little bit like that. But even if it's like that, it still still needs to move slightly segmented. Yeah. So the back is actually moving forward a little bit yeah, like, like like this. like this. Yeah. Sort of yeah. waving through. But just very little. Yes. Not flopping about. No. That That's you true. can't transfer power but with flopping. Flopping mm -hmm. doesn't transfer power. That powerful is powerful flopping. <laughs> no powerful <laughs> flop extensions were had. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have Stable spine, but it still needs to segment. Yeah, and that's a problem with this horse. Would you mind taking? Could you take it back? Is that possible? No. No. All right. Can you run it until it looks horrible again? <laughs> Just get it straight <laughs> from the side, please. Okay. <laughs> straight from the side will be all right. Uh, preferably from and the I'm inside. I'm changing. <laughs> oh, this will be great. There, here you go. Stop. Oh. <laughs> so, if you guys have a look at this spine now. This spine is not segmenting correctly. No. You can see that it's just in front of the of the pelvis, there's a horrible drop. Mm -hmm. That's a fault in the horse, not of the horse's making, not of the rider's making, mm -hmm. but there's something there that we need to try and correct for. Because we need to help the horse. Yes. So because he, the he's not able to do this on himself you, by himself. No, he won't even try. Mm -hmm. but, so what's happened lately actually with this horse is that he has started playing with the other horses, yeah. something he never used to do. Mm -hmm. Hanna runs herself down a little bit by the, the, because you know she thinks that because her body isn't perfect then of course the horse can't have a perfectly strong body either but it has improved immensely. Even if you can see that his uh, default mode is this. Mm -hmm. And you can see that this spine will not be segmenting at all. It will be sort of locked in a bad position. Mm -hmm. and the two ways to, that this, this shape of the back can happen, either there is no support in any muscle anywhere, mm -hmm. then it just drops like that, yep. or there is too much tension in the top line somewhere. Mm -hmm. Normally just pieces, but it could be all of it. Mm. Right. Thank you, man. Run. So what I'm basically doing is I'm pos I'm I'm using my inside uh, inside rein to position him to the inside, mm -hmm. and then I'm just letting go. And you can and you see... need to do that. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. And and you need to do that like in with feeling, n not just sitting like this. No. That doesn't help anything. That what is, is more just with feeling. Yeah, because if you do this, the horse will just collapse. Yes. You need to it'll, stretch. It'll pull his neck in instead of stretching his nose forward. So you can see that he's not very rhythmical. No. Uh, if you if you don't pay attention, it looks fairly all right. But you can see that it goes doom 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 doom, and it's like really that, difficult for you to find any sort of balance up there. And, and it's quite easy to see yeah. that you struggle finding the rhythm he moves in because he doesn't move in a defined rhythm all the time. Mm. He finds the rhythm sometimes, mm -hmm. moves nicely. And then after two or four strides, he falls out of it again. Mm -hmm. And then you can see that you do too. Yeah. And sometimes it's difficult to see, say whether it's you or, or the horse mm -hmm. falling out of the rhythm. I remember one of the first time things I noticed in riding was with... Uh, could you stop the video again for a second? Was from Ar <laughs> brilliant Arthur Cottas. Could we, Arthur Cottas was riding um, in a video. He was riding uh, uh, Tempai Changes. Mm -hmm every stride and I took the movie back and forth a hundred times a thousand times mm -hmm. to try and find out whether it was him moving first into the new 
Kanta, or oh, nice. if it was the horse moving first into the new Kanta. And this is the same idea here. Is it, do you fall out of your rhythm and balance first, or does the horse? I challenge the public to have a look. I think it's, it, I think mostly the horse will. Yeah, but it doesn't but matter. Sometimes because, you will, but it doesn't yeah, matter no. because you have one control over one body, yours. Yeah, and so, you know that that, that is the, the blaming game again. So try to find the balance. Yes, and aid together the horse in his balance. Yes, and you need to, to you need to just uh, continue moving forwards, mm -hmm. Be, and and try to find this this relaxed way to swing forwards, and then the horse will find a better rit rhythm in time. Some horses will do it quickly mm -hmm. and some horses will take a long time to find it because they have trouble. But as, as long as the horse is not lame, mm -hmm. he, he will become better in this, just by this easy method. Yeah, simple method. The idea is that this, this is like a very good dancer and a not very good dancer dancing together. Mm -hmm. The very good dancer will make the not so good dancer look much better. Yeah. True. That can happen both ways. Mm -hmm. Can happen. You, you can take a magnificent horse, put someone on who doesn't really know what they're doing, and they'll look all right. Yeah, yeah, and, and we know about that. You know, we have a young horse with a, an experienced rider, and and uh, uh, and the vice versa. But what we usually see is an ordinary rider with an ordinary horse mm -hmm. that have trouble both of them. And this and shows this, what you should do then. It's that one thing that you can do, but the thing that we are we're talking about right now is that we shouldn't be ashamed of of uh, having faults. We shouldn't be afraid of going to a clinic and try to get help because we we think that we're not perfect. But that is about teach. That is about teaching and learning to come to come and, and get help. Yeah, I've heard. Uh, you could run the video again, please. I've heard a lot of uh, of riders come to clinics or even just watching the clinic. They say, oh, no, I need to train before I come to the clinic. And I'm like, what? What's yeah. that now? Mm. No, you don't have to train before you get there. Come to me and I'll help you train better. That's the whole idea, isn't it? Mm. And here you, here you can see that the horse is behind the vertical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is because he's, uh, he, he, he's not able to stretch uh, well. Mm -hmm. But then you need to stretch and stretch and stretch, and every time, every time I, I yield the reins forwards, he's stretching a little bit more. Yeah. And and in the end, now I guess some uh, a couple of times now he's been uh, like with his nose in at the ground. Yeah, you can see now that he really lengthened the stride in the shoulders yeah. in that little passage there. And you need to be patient and just try to be. Exact. And if you have trouble in your body, just post to the trot and, and stand in the stirrups in the canter. I think we're going to see some canter now. Yeah. And then I'm trying to stand and let him stretch. You can see that she's moving herself out of the saddle to allow him to move as freely as possible. Yeah, to to move the so that he can move the saddle, so that I'm not hindering him in any way. Yeah, and uh, all riders should do this a lot. I don't do it enough. Mm. Look, at, he's trying to stretch. Can you see that? He is. Yeah. Sure. Very nice. And then the stride becomes longer as well. And this is what most of the training looks like. Yeah. Most of the training is about getting rid of weaknesses. Stiffnesses yep. and all sorts of stuff like that. Then Getting more co when, coordination. When that is all right, mm -hmm. it isn't difficult to ride pirouettes or piaf. No, then it becomes easy. Yes. Yeah. Because most of the tr pr uh, problems people uh, experience when they're trying to do... Exp uh, now we can just stop it because after that I'm trying to, to counter on the, uh, to the left and then he's he's so stiff there so it's difficult for him thank you yeah yeah uh so the point of this oh a question uh, yep so nadina wonders if um you get more movement in the shoulder if you teach him spanish walk strengthen and stretch in the shoulder over time 
Yeah, I've got a good answer that we had. We got a horse once that was very stiff in the shoulders and we got this advice to train Spanish walk. And um, the horse was a very intelligent one. So it would it, one piece of sugar uh, and then he did the Spanish walk. And it was impossible to get him to stop with it. And then what he was doing, he was doing like this. Yeah. Like with his back. And he was really pressing his back down. Uh, and it was horrible. And we, we got like half a year. Yeah. Half a year just by, by unlearning it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, it can be done. It can be done. Yeah. If you're really good, it is possible. But then you need to make sure that you don't you don't make the horse uh, lower his back even more. Yeah, and and I, so on my, I'll I'll add this from my uh, training a person perspective. Um, when you, uh, let's take the horse perspective anyway. Sorry. So, when I look at a horse, and uh, he's moving. I want to see whether he is carrying weight on his hind legs. And the way I see that, one of the ways, is that I want the joint to bend while the leg is grounded. If it does, the chance is pretty big that he is carrying a lot of weight on that leg. Mm. It's like if I stand up here and I put my weight on my arms and bend my arms and carry everything on the arm, that's really heavy. If I straighten my arms, it's really easy. And the same thing happens with horses. So my point for with regards to the Spanish walk is that the Spanish walk can free up the shoulders to some extent. But it's important to understand that this doesn't do all that much. The horse is just lifting his leg and the leg weighs less than I can lift. So, mm. so that's not hard at all. The point is to be to allow the leg to swing and to be able to take weight on the legs as they move when they land mm -hmm. and in the spanish walk that doesn't happen have a care now i'm not slighting the spanish walk at no, all no i'm just trying to point to what the spanish walk can do and what the spanish walk can't do so it can loosen the shoulder and allow the horse to move the shoulder without having a lot of weight on it. That is a good thing, but it doesn't train the strength of the shoulder and it doesn't allow the shoulder to be stronger when it hits the ground. No, and also it doesn't learn, it doesn't teach the horse to lift his, its back and lift his withers. When, uh, it, it can, but you have to be magical. I have seen it done, but, but okay. those people were magical. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I believe you. <laughs> you have to have the hindquarters so much underneath that the point sort of becomes moot. Yeah. It mm. doesn't really matter anymore. Because the, uh, the walk is, is, isn't diagonal as, as, in the same way as uh, the trot is. No. No. Yeah. But, so, all of that, yeah. That's it with the question. Or even mm. right to right. Cool. Um, do you have anything uh, more on your mind? No, I this? don't think so. Um, uh, I think the, we've said most, most of it. Yeah. So, sort of a, a, a quick recap. The main point is, it's not your fault. And it is not your horse's fault. What you want to do is to aid the horse to the best of your abilities and that will always be good enough. Yeah, but it's also your responsibility to try to be as best that you, as you can. If you want to get to, good, that's yeah. your... And to train. Mm -hmm. and, it's only and... your responsibility if you set an aim. Yeah. It can be any aim, but... Yeah, but you know, if the horse is in pain, if the, or if the horse is stiff, I would think that it's my responsibility to help the horse to become of better. Of course, I think everybody will think like that if yeah but then it's it, it's, uh, it's easy to think that okay it's I have got so many students who say it's I know it's my fault it's my fault uh, no I said this is not. not your fault the horse is had the horse has this problem let's help the horse hmm. and then 
because if we say it's my fault all the time, then we forget to help the horse when the horse has got a problem. So we need to stop blaming yep. and take, take responsibility, try to become as best as we can, but not stop riding or give up because we have a problem. Nope. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Then we have just a few more points for today. Uh, mm -hmm. Next episode will be on November 10th. Uh, we try to do this every fortnight. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's the last one in the series of the rhythms. Uh, that's the last rhythm, rhythmic one. Yeah. After that will be non-rhythmical. No, we're talk, going Sand to talk walkers. about rhythm. <laughs> um, <laughs> we also, of course, uh, hope that you'll like us on Facebook if you haven't already. Uh, and please share your suggestions. If you have ideas that you want us to do something about, uh, ask but it needs to be in sort of a general way it is very unlikely that we will take you and your horse and use you as uh, uh, tonight's bait hmm. that, that's probably not gonna happen but you can ask on a general uh, in a general way if my horse were to have this <laughs> problem is there anything i could do to solve it then we might <laughs> we might try and bake that into our into our uh, shows or our uh, our streams mm -hmm. and uh, answer to the best of our abilities. Uh, we might even use one of our own horses or our own riding to try and shed some light on your your problem or your experiences. Mm. Um, I think that's all. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Have a really good night. Never never forget mirror mirror on the wall. We'll be hanging there. <laughs>